This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it is yoga time again, actually, with a Lenovo Yoga. This is a Yoga 3, 14-inch, and it does, well, the yoga thing. So what's neat about this? Well, it's Intel 5th generation Broadwell CPUs, and it's full core i5 and i7 CPUs, so it's actually faster than the Lenovo Yoga 3 Pro that only had the core M inside. We can look at it now. So here it is for a third generation, the Lenovo Yoga 3. This is the not pro model. So, you know, you're not actually giving up a whole lot. What you're, you're doing is in some ways gaining things. What you're gaining is some thickness and some weight. The Lenovo Yoga 3 Pro is wildly light and thin, especially convertibles tend to be heavier. That beefy hinges, this kind of whole mechanism right here. And while the Yoga 3 Pro is 2.6 pounds. This one is 3.5 pounds. And it's a bit thicker at 0.7 inches. The 3 Pro is wildly skinny. But what you do get here is faster. Full Intel Core i5 and i7 CPUs. Broadwell, 5th generation, the latest there. So faster than the Core M that's used in the Yoga 3 Pro. Isn't that a little confusing? Also, much as this looks a lot like the Yoga 2 Pro, which had the matte black finish, soft touch plastic over some magnesium. This one has only a 1080p display. That's not a bad thing. 1920 by 1080 on a 14 inch IPS display. That's actually a very good resolution. As long as you have pretty decent eyes, you don't even have to run it with any sort of scaling. The icons are big enough to see. So you avoid all that problem with Windows and third party programs not always supporting scaling well. Everything in the Metro live tile area always handles scaling well. It's on the desktop where you might find some programs really don't support it. So with those super high resolution displays, you might have tiny text. Then you scale things up and then you get fuzzy text. So here, not so much of a problem. I think it's a pretty sweet spot of resolution and it's not a bad IPS display. I have seen wider viewing angles. You know, IPS displays come in grades like everything else. And you can see it dimming a bit as you move off angle and the colors mute, but not so bad at all. And you want some something pretty decent viewing angle wise because well this is a yoga you can use it like a tablet you can put it in tent mode and yes it's a yoga so the keys will always show on the back side the computer will ignore them so you don't have to worry about that we'll ignore the trackpad so a variety of ways that you can use this obviously at three and a half pounds you're not going to use this like an ipad right it's a bit heavy for that but if you want if you want to rest it on the table while you're using it you can set it up in your lap in presentation mode which is one of my favorites you just do this with it Bring the display up, automatic rotation handles things, and then you know you can watch movies, surf the web, and all that sort of thing. The key, keyboard's not in the way, so it's much easier to reach the screen. That's the idea behind this here. You're not reaching over the display, you can move it closer to you. So that works pretty nicely as well, too. So inside here, the, the top deck were, kind of reminds me of the Lenovo Y50 series, which is a pretty popular series of 15-inch gaming slim and light laptops here. You got the brush kind of metal finish that Lenovo does on the consumer line. This is not a ThinkPad model. This is a consumer line model. Pretty large trackpad here behaves very nicely. Really pretty happy with that. Backlit keyboard here. Lenovo usually does a very nice keyboard. Now, the only problem with this one is key travel is on... Um, the short side. I mean, this is a skinny laptop, not as skinny, obviously, as the Yoga 3 Pro, but it's not like the awesome ThinkPad experience exactly in terms of feel and tactile feedback as a result of that. It's not a terrible keyboard. It's not springy or anything like that. There's a little flex in the deck. If you push down, you can see it moving, but you have to be a pretty, well, ham-fingered typist probably to really get much crush going on this keyboard. So it's an okay keyboard. It's not the super duper best of Lenovo's keyboards. It's certainly usable and serviceable. And as always with ThinkPads, to turn the backlight on, press FN and hit the space bar, and there's our backlight coming on. Hit it again, goes off. Single stage backlighting there. And something Lenovo likes to do with their consumer line, we have the page up, page down, end, and home buttons over here on the side. That takes a little getting used to so you don't accidentally go reaching for the enter key and hit page up every time. But I find it's not too hard to get used to. Trackpad, like I said, good synaptics trackpad. It works perfectly well. The little chrome surround for a little stylish look. And so you really can feel it if you've wandered off the side. That is always a good thing. As, as with all trackpads these days, it is the buttonless so-called whole trackpad moves and clicks at the bottom. Not too, too loud. You can hear it a little bit. Nothing annoying there. So that part's all good. The hinges are just like the Yoga 2 style hinges and they're sturdy. I really haven't heard anybody having any problems with them. I never have. Beefy, not the fancy watch band style hinge of the Yoga 3 Pro. 
if that floated your boat, I don't know. I, I think these kind of everyday normal serviceable hinges are good. Obviously, you can use it flat if you want to as well. Imagination, it's all up to you as to how you want to use this guy. On the side over here, there's our power button. Typically with convertibles and two-in-ones, the, the buttons are on the side because you might be using it in tablet mode where you can't actually access something that's on the keyboard deck. Likewise, there's volume controls over here as well, so you don't have to open it up just to change the volume. The Lenovo One Key Recovery button here that you press with, uh, say, a paperclip or something like that. Rotation lock button. We have our mini HDMI port, micro or rather HDMI port right there. S. USB 3.0 port on that side. And on this side here, another USB 3.0 port. We have aha, a dual duty USB and charging port. I'll show you the charger in a minute there. Our combo headphone mic jack and an SD card slot. Now let's take a look at that charger because Lenovo has been doing something different like they do with the Yoga 3 Pro. Notice it has a little notch over here. That's so you can use the special charging cable that it comes with, which is maddeningly short. Looks like a USB cable has a little extra notch on it. So that port does two things in one, if you like. And here's the compact charger. No, no complaints about that, except for the cord is pretty darn short. If you're one of those people who is uh, at Starbucks a lot, you're going to be hogging the outlet because you don't have a whole lot of length to work with here. So as you can see, I mean, usually touchscreen laptops do have glossy displays, but this one is one of those things you could just about use to light a campfire if you had to. It's that reflective if you were trying to reflect the sun or something like that. Ah, uh, well, at least it's fairly bright, and so it, it mitigates some of that. Now you can see how the color saturation is. At first blush, you'd say, wow, that's a really vivid orange, right? And this is one of the Lenovo desktop images that they provide for us, but you can see the colors actually blooming and you're losing some detail. For those of you who are wondering what wider color gamut gets you, instead of colors blooming into an indistinct kind of oversaturated blob, if it has a higher color gamut, you'll see more detail and it'll look really nice and sharp versus a little bit of blooming there. So that tells us this is tells us this is not a super high color gamut display. And here is our color gamut. We use our Spider 4 Pro Colorimeter, which is a hardware device in conjunction with software to measure color right there. And you can see 65% of sRGB and 49% of Adobe RGB. Typically for products that are priced around $1,000 like this is, we see something like 95% to 99% of sRGB. So this one is a bit lower. It's still nice looking. Like I said, now you know what the difference is. Some colors are going to bloom instead of actually showing more detail and more different shades of a particular color. Now for brightness, you can see it got 205.5 nits of brightness for a rating. Black levels are pretty good at 0.32. Lower numbers are better with black levels, and the blacks are indeed pretty black, like the background right there. Contrast ratio of 640 to 1 is pretty darn respectable, and the white point from the factory was 6700 degrees, which is actually not so far off. Calibration helps get this to be more accurate for those of you who do care about that. All right, so how much does it cost and what do you get inside? We're looking at the $949 configuration, which is pretty much at the lower end of the line. By the way, for those of you who care about colors, this is available in black, which obviously we have here. It's matte black, silver, or white. White costs $50 more for some reason. Currently sold out on Lenovo's website also, but... Anyway, $949 unless you like white. And for that, you get Core i5-5200U, again, fifth generation CPU, running at 2.2 gigahertz base clock rate. Of course, all the Core i5s and i7s have turbo boost. You get eight gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD in here. And that's a two and a half inch SATA form factor SSD, your average little, you know, miniature hard drive that goes in a laptop. It's not one of the M2 gum sticks or anything like that. So it's pretty easy to find uh, replacement, a bigger capacity if you want to do that down the road. And it's pretty easy to do. We'll splice in a photo of the internals so you can see it. And unusually, RAM is socketed. It has one RAM slot. And currently, since generally speaking, 8 gigs is the largest SODIM RAM module you can get, 8 gigs is the functional max for this. We will be looking at a company who does make 16 gig modules. Kind of an experimental, wild new thing there. And we'll test it with this to see how it works. The 14-inch IPS Full HD display is the only display option. That's a touchscreen, no active pen support. You could use a capacitive stylus if you want. And 14 inches is nicer for those of you who say 13.3-inch. Well, things are a little too teeny. I want some more space there. 
If you want to spend more money and get a Core i7, that's going to run you about $1,100 right now on Lenovo's website. And these are actual selling prices. Their list prices are higher, but you know how Lenovo goes. They always have some discounts of some sort. If you like the 11.6 inch model better, that's going to have a Core M, a less powerful CPU, but for 11.6 inch, not a bad thing. That one starts at $679 and it also has a full HD IPS display. No matter which one you get, you get what Lenovo calls their Lenovo Wi-Fi able to live in AC wireless. It's actually a Qualcomm Atheros card that's a little narrower than we've seen for cards. And you can see that in the splice in picture that we provided for you there, what that looks like. And it also has Bluetooth 4.0 on board. It's behaved just fine for us, so no complaints there. 45 watt hour battery, nominally sealed inside. I say nominally because undo some Torx screws on the bottom and you, you can access the battery. It's not like this thing is sealed for life, difficult like a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro to actually service. So take off a bunch of those Torx screws here and that's how you get inside. Obviously we have ventilation here where it sucks in, it shoots the air out the back side. Our stereo speakers live in grills right over here. So they're down firing, down slash side firing, but they're, they're pretty adequate so they don't sound too bad. Rubber feet, keep it from sliding away on you. So how does it perform? We have the Core i5 2.2 gigahertz model with 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD, which is a Samsung 851 SSD, by the way. Nice, fast SSD there. Here's our Geekbench 3 score. I know there's somebody out there that's been screaming to see screenshots of the benchmark, so here you go. This one's for you. Geekbench 2656 for the single core, 5313 for the multi-core. That's a pretty respectable score right there. And now we'll take a look at how the SSD did. And notice we have the regular old Windows Photo Viewer here, and this is Lenovo Photo Master Photo Viewer. Lenovo puts a lot of software in here. I know some of you are going to make uh, jokes about them putting adware on and stuff like that. No, that's not the case. They're not doing that anywhere, no Superfish. But they do put a lot of stuff on here, including the Harmony that's supposed to help you with the screen rotation by suggesting programs you should use. I don't think we really need that stuff. Anyway, it's up to you. You can remove it. But this is how the SSD did here, and that's that's a good set of numbers for an SSD. It's a pretty zippy SSD given the given the price point of this. I'm not going to complain at all. And here we actually have PC Mark 7 still running. We've got our benchmark score of 4598. Now anywhere from about usually 48 to 5000 is where we see the Core i5 fourth or fifth generation CPU. So just a hair lower there. Uh, I, I think it's brought down a little bit by graphics, which is just a hair slower than normal. It's, it's a matter of tuning. This is the same, same Intel HD 5500 graphics. It just depends on the graphics driver build more than anything else and how much power and heat management Lenovo is trying to do. For W Prime, it computed Pi in 21.4 seconds. Usually somewhere in 19 to 19.9 would be normal, so just a hair slower there as well. PC Mark 8, the home accelerated test, it scored 27. 47, which is pretty good. That's about par for the course for a Core i5 Ultrabook. So in terms of performance, just fine, just where we'd expect it. Battery life on this, pretty good, about seven hours or so. For 45 watt hour battery and a Core i5, that's actually good, believe it or not. So for those of you who are looking for the miraculous nine or 10 hour Energizer Bunny, this isn't it, but it has pretty respectable battery life. And you can see this is all the software that Lenovo preloads on here, and yeah, I, I would whack some of that personally, to tell you the truth right there. It has an effective performance at all. McAfee is pre-installed. I generally remove that and just use Microsoft's own antivirus software. It's free. It's lightweight. It doesn't intrude a whole lot. So what else can you get for around $900 or so, $1,000? Well, there is competition in the convertible space. We just looked at the really lovely HP Spectre X360. Starts at $895 for a Core i5 with 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gig SSD. It's $999 for 8 gigs and a 256 gig SSD. This is a stunning looking machine. So in terms of which one is flashier, which one is prettier, metal everywhere. I have to say HP is really doing a good job of fighting back. This one is also available with either full HD 1080p IPS display or 2560 by 1440 display. Supports both touch and active pen too. So Lenovo has some competition these days. There's a lot of folks doing that whole yoga hinge thing and that's what this one does as well. You can do all the same, bring it around, flap it like so.
That gives you an idea of the competition in the convertible space. Of course, there are other models as well, but looking at the ones that are shooting around the same price and that just came out about the same time, the Spectre X360 certainly comes to mind first. So how about speakers and what does it look like when it plays video? Of course, we're going to test one of our YouTube videos, but there we are in web browser. By the way, this machine has more than enough horsepower to handle your everyday productivity tasks. It's going to be office, photo editing, even raw files, some HD video editing, web browsing, many tabs open, video playback, 1080p video. It can do all that stuff. All right, so here's our Spectre X360 review, and we will test video playback. And we are at 60% volume right now. This uses Waves Max Audio. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and here's a Windows convertible laptop that you guys have been asking volume. for. This is the HP Spectre X360. Don't confuse it with the NV X360. HP does a lot of similar but different things. This is a Spectre. So not bad sounding, not super loud, but it's not hissy or shrill or anything like that. It's not bad sound at all, and the screen looks quite good. You don't need super wide color gamut just to have a decent video playback experience, and photographs here look pretty nice. The red background on the laptop there is looking pretty nice and vivid, so it's a very pleasing looking display. So that's the Lenovo Yoga 3, 14 inch. It's available now again as configured here pretty much. The model I would recommend getting Core i5, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gig SSD is $949, and it's not a bad laptop. It's got an understated design, but it's, it's, it's nice enough looking. Nice soft touch finish that feels good. It's pretty grippy. You won't drop it fast SSD inside. Pretty decent 1080p IPS touch to screen. Not bad, not bad at all. Of course, there is a lot of competition out there. Even if you're looking for a convertible design like this with the swivel hinges, as you see, there's a lot to consider nowadays, including Lenovo's own Yoga 3 Pro for those of you who don't need full core i5 performance and want lighter weight and a thinner, more styling looking design. So that's the Lenovo Yoga 3 14 inch. Again, also available as an 11.6 inch if you like for a little bit less money, a little bit less horsepower inside, but still same design. And general fit and finish, and it's a very likable laptop at 949. It has a lot of stiff competition though, and you know, a lot of other folks are making the yoga style hinge now, including the HP Spectre X360 that we showed you a little comparison moment there, but as ever, it looks a lot like the Yoga Pro 2, which isn't a bad thing. It has a nice soft touch finish, a decent full HD IPS touch screen, and it's available now. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full written review, and Hit that like button.